pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, first order of business is, is the minutes. They've been read and reviewed and, and read the revised uh, read and reviewed motion. Move, we uh, approve the minutes. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's it. And after the wife announces the budget's on the agenda. What's that? The next one will be, will be three weeks. Yeah, November 15th. I, I think, I mean, depending on how it goes, we, we should be able to close a lot. But if we can't close, we have to continue due to the 21 days. Okay. Uh, first order of business is uh, Osgood Street, Nash, Mass Electric. So this is for Mass Electric Company, it's an RDA, for the proposed overhead to underground electric conversion along a portion of Osgood Street for the purpose of complying with FAA regulation requirements for the Lawrence Municipal Airport, which is just to the north of this site. The proposed work uh, will occur along a 1,100 linear foot corridor between buildings number 980 and number 1077 on Osgood Street with work consisting of removing all overhead electric utilities including utility poles, wire and wires and installing underground electric conduit including three electric manholes, two switch gear manholes and multiple handholes. The proposed work within the 100 foot buffer zone to BVW will include two uh, utility pole removals and the installation of two electric manholes along with the installation of 350 feet of underground conduit of the 1,100 uh, foot conduit project. All impacts will be temporary and the proposed work areas will be returned to their pre-existing conditions. Proposed erosion controls will consist of the uh, North Andover standard 12-foot uh, biodegradable straw wattles secured by wooden stakes, which will be installed between the edge of the work area and the resource areas. And in addition, silt sacks will be installed throughout the extent of the project route. Uh, that concludes the summary of the work. If anyone has any questions. Joe? Does the work all in paved area or shoulder area? It's all within the paved area as far as they can tell right now. I believe they've already done dig safe and they are intending to have it be fully within paved area. But it will all be contained within the roadway right of way which is considered 10 feet off of the edge of the paved roadway. I'm always curious mm. of new and um, improved FAA regulations. You know what what necessitates a change in FAA regulation? Excuse me, what FAA regulation change necessitates us now after decades of having pools yeah, out there? Given that I don't work for the FAA, the airport, or even um, National Grid or Mass Electric, I couldn't tell you what. But I'm assuming that they have decided to take down these tall structures in favor of underground utilities. And are there shared utilities on these poles? Excuse me, I'm real, mm -hmm. real hoarse tonight. Uh, are there shared utilities? Uh, telephone, cable TV, or is it just transmission line for you guys? I, I am not aware of that. I just know that it's electric conduit. I may have on my maps. To my knowledge, there's no shared utility. It's all just electric. Are there street lights on these poles? And if we put them all underground, what are we lighting if, if we lose the street lights? I don't believe the street lights will be gone. What will be removed is the transmission poles. 
None of this scope of work includes the removal of street lights. Uh, it's but just if we're removing poles, don't the lights come with them? I guess is my question. I, I, you know, none of those are environmental questions. They're just curiosity. Yeah. Um, one thing leads to another. Um, within, within the scope of work, I can tell you that they don't have anything about street lights being removed, just the utility poles that is stringing along the wire down the road. No, no other questions. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Hi. Um, do you know if the, uh, the, the work for removing, removing the poles and anything that attached to the poles uh, requires approval by the Board of Selectmen? Are you not. aware? No. Um, how about a watershed special permit? Due to proximity to the lake. Can no, you? I talked to them. They, this utilities are exempt. They're exempt, so this is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Got it. This also won't be getting within 200 feet of uh, Lake Kajikawik, as you can see from the buffer. Uh, the work will be stopping before it reaches yeah. the buffer zone. The watershed's way closer than that, but mm -hmm. it's fine. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at an aerial photograph. It yeah. looks pretty that's, close to me. That's but true. They regulate within 400 feet of the lake and within. 350 feet of any wetland. So. Oh, okay. So, so, so Jen, I'll, I'll just, this but doesn't, I asked this doesn't, so Selectman did not have to re approve this? That I don't know. So they, when we put under all the poles underground at the common, that was reviewed by the Board of Selectmen, so. All, all pole activities come under the Board of Selectmen, That's whether they're adding a new pole or removing a pole, everything comes, if they want to put a new pole anywhere, it requires Board of Selectmen approval. I'm just, right. I'm assuming they must have it, um, but. Whether it because it's a state road might change that. I, yes. Yeah, I would think it would. Grid the location would be on town jurisdictional roads. Right. Not, would be with, not with Mass roads. Highway. Yeah. All right. So um, the scope of work is 1,100 linear feet along Osgood Street, mm -hmm. which is adjacent to Runway 32. And last question, if, if you can, if you know, um, will there be any trees? remaining in that scope of work area that are as high as the poles. <laughs> I know that they don't intend to do any trimming or yeah. tree removal, so I guess the trees that are there now are going to stay. That's not in the scope of work. <laughs> so that'll be coming next month. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Also, thank you. Um, how deep do they go? Uh, these trenches, I know, will be only a couple inches wide. I'm seeing five inches, four I'm inches. Inter I'm interested in the depth. Generally, they don't go any deeper than two feet. Two feet. Okay, very good. Yep. Okay, as to the erosion control, um, I believe that we require um, a compost or bark mulch according to the conservation administrator. Yeah, that's we usually. So silt socks with the mulch inside? For on linear projects like this mm -hmm. on pavement where you don't have room for trench siltation fence or hay bales or anything, it would yep. be um, bark mulch or, or compost filter sock, not not, not the straw waddle. Okay, we'll make note of that. Okay. And then um, after, after uh, the trench is opened up, it will be closed at the end of each day? Yep. Um, as per the exemption that we're filing this under um, for installation of utilities within the edge of the roadway, all trenches need to be closed by the end of each work day, so that will certainly be And how um, long do you think it's going to take to complete this project? I, I, I wouldn't have an estimation of that. However, as soon as this work is scheduled, we can um, convey the information of the start date and the end date to uh, the agent so that it will be known. Thank you. I'm sure they'll notify other boards within the town that would be interested as well. Thank you. No question. Motion? So it would be a negative number three under the bylaw and number five for the Wetland Protection Act exemption with conditions for pre and post construction inspections once erosion controls are installed. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Uh, next one is um, A Meadow, 242 Good evening. My name is Stan Bigelow. I'm a registered civil engineer uh, with uh, Engineering uh, Land Services in Newbury, 
and I was asked by uh, Mr. Farmer to uh, uh, prepare a plan for erosion control, uh, I'm sorry, for uh, uh, bringing the uh, riprap revetment on the side of uh, the house at 255 Hay Meadow Road uh, up to what would be considered uh, proper standards for uh, revetment construction. Uh, I've inspected the, um, the the revetment that's currently there. It's uh, consisting of uh, a mix of different stone materials. Um, we couldn't really class it as a uh, typical uh, uh, revetment that we would find in riprap uh, on a slope uh, protection situation in residential situations. It has um, some armor stone at the top and some uh, large, um, what we would call uh, river rock um, that are situated also at the top of the, uh, the slope. We conducted an analysis on the slope, uh, on the slope uh, of the face of the revetment and found that it doesn't meet the uh, two to one slope, which we would require for uh, riprap revetment of this nature. Um, so we prepared a plan that would uh, uh, address bringing that to the two to one slope requirement. Um, and it would consist of having a, a, a grade all uh, load stone of different gradations out of the back of a, a dump trucks um, and load it down over the face of the embankment um, after placing erosion controls at the base of the embankment and uh, putting in a, uh, a tow of the uh, uh, revetment. The tow that we envision would consist of uh, a lift of uh, uh, small gradation stone to act as a filter. Ordinarily what you would do in a situation like this with a uh, uh, riprap revetment is put down a uh, filter fabric filter before you place the revetment. We can't do that because we're already dealing with a uh, stone revetment. So by placing a uh, small diameter stone, three quarter inch, two inch and a half stone uh, in a uh, shallow lift at the base of the slope um, between the erosion controls and the base of the slope, we could create a tow, uh, a, um, a filter for the tow to uh, allow water that's coming down the inside slope of the uh, revetment to drain out and be filtered before it's draining out into the uh, uh, into the wetland area. Uh, then we would be placing a lift of uh, medium stone, which is uh, usually inch and a half to three and a half inch stone on top of that. Uh, behind that toe, we would suggest taking as many of the stones that have rolled off the, uh, the slope um, out into the wetland area, uh, pull them back and create a row of, of uh, larger diameter stones uh, behind the tow, and then uh, regrade the face using the same small diameter and medium diameter stones to allow uh, more angular rock to get a hold on the slope and to prevent the larger stones that are uh, above from uh, rolling down. Um, the larger stones would also be uh, placed about in the uh, completed face of the, of the angular stone revetment face so that we would be able to um, keep those locked into place uh, and keep them from rolling down the slope. Um, altogether, I, I met with my client um, for the first time uh, just a couple of days ago. I was working through uh, New England Environmental, who was uh, representing him up until now, um, and the client didn't seem terribly uh, uh, enamored with the idea of doing much of anything to the uh, stone revetment. I did impress upon him the fact that it wasn't safe the way it was. Um, I actually happened to see uh, a photograph today of, uh, I guess, his wife's car slid off the driveway down over the embankment. Uh, so there is a safety issue there. Uh, 
we recommend or we, we strongly urge that there also be guardrails placed at the top of the, uh, uh, the slope before the project is finished. Thank you. Joe? So we've been talking about this project for a long time. That's the first string of sentences that I've heard makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. <coughs> um, <coughs> no way you, you put a filter fabric in, I understand that. But because you're not able to, I think you're talking about a washed stone product now as opposed to just like a, a dense graded mix of stone. So if you're doing an <coughs> inch and a half size stone, it would have to be washed. Yes, well, it would be the same type of stone that we would ordinarily put into, say, a, uh, a leaching system uh, okay. for a septic system. Uh, okay. So it would be double wash stone, yes. The cart that went up the slope, the photo that you saw, was that like a recent occurrence or was that a photograph of something that happened a while ago? It's one uh, from I think, a while ago. We oh, have it in the file. Okay, that's right. I'm hoping it wasn't another one. I think I'm, I'm okay. I mean, the, the reality is, is we've identified long ago that there was, you know, the issue with stability, and you know, we're about to order something, and if he doesn't carry it out, I think it's a separate action for, have, for another yeah, day. Yeah, we have an enforcement order currently in place, and I had written another one pending that this wouldn't get resolved. So, I, I, I mean, I think we're, this is what we required, and if he follows through with this, he's in compliance. If he doesn't, he's not, so. I'm all set. Yeah. So actually, my question is for Jen. It's a, more of an administrative question. I'm, I'm perfectly satisfied with your proposal. Um, th this is an NOI. He, he, ha he has, does he have a previous order of conditions on the property? Yeah, so that's up for later discussion, and I think we can close that out. We kind of held off on that pending receipt of the new order, but generally when we issue a new order, we want the old ones closed out. The old one was for construction of the house. There's nothing I see in that order, given how old it is, that hasn't been met. It involved the bridge over the property, which has that bridge and restriction on the flow of the wetland at that point has resulted in the wetland being much larger at the driveway point. That's one of my questions to you is, does he need a waiver request? I mean, the driveway and all of its appurtenances are constructed with an order of condition. So my thought was, he doesn't need a waiver. The driveway and the revetment are illegal. The wetland has just moved a lot closer such that they're in the no build, no disturb zone. When this was constructed, there was not a no build, no disturb zone too. So. So, well, that's, that's what's driving my question. So the, the, what the existing conditions were built pursuant to an order of conditions from this, this commission. It has not, never been completed. Or it, has, has, it has been completed. Never so closed up. The they order just of conditions. So this is a discussion I had with Mr. Farmer, who was the client, the representative before Mr. Stanton, and he noted that the order of conditions had never been recorded. And this is a pretty massive order, especially for that crossing. And so he wondered how he was going to close it out. And I told him they would need to record both at the same time, both the order of conditions and. The certificate of compliance, and I recommend getting that done because that's another thing. Before this comes to a close, we want this done. So, so my, my my opinion is just to not bury this in the weeds. My opinion is if we're going to close out that original order of conditions, then we should issue a waiver for this new work because it wouldn't be, it wouldn't have anything to stand on if that order is closed. No, what I'm saying is. It doesn't require a waiver because the work that's constructed out there, the fact that there is a revetment and a driveway did not require a waiver. Okay. And so reinforcing that revetment shouldn't require a waiver? I thought, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, isn't the revetment work more aggressive than it was originally approved? Didn't it go further out? It's really hard to tell. And you would probably agree that it looks like you just dumped stone down the side of it. So how far the revetment went out before um, is, who knows? But the wetland has come much closer. If you look at that, this plan in front of you right now, you know, the, the wetland's a good 20, 30 feet closer. And it's largely because a restriction was constructed, you know, up gradient or down gradient. I, I'm kind of leaning towards Al. I, I, except that I don't see any harm in issuing the waiver if it's a formality. At least it, it memorializes the fact. Getting the applicant to request it could be a whole different thing. Uh, 
Okay, well, it, we're, we're going to draft. We could, ask, we could ask the engineer to fill what, out the waiver request form. No, no, it's okay because at the end of this, we're going to deliberate on an order of conditions, right? Okay. Okay, no problem. I'm all set. I know what to do. Thank you. Um, it, right now, what is the slope? It, it varies, uh, as, you, as you saw from the cross sections that we, we made, um, it varies from one to one, which would be a perfectly good slope, uh, to as deep as uh, four to one or five to one in some places. And where, the, where it's four to one and five to one, I have to add to that, it's got armor rock at the top of the, of, of the slope, so it's not what we would ordinarily see as a revetment type of stone situation. It's uh, if you do armor rock, in those armor rock situations, if they're done properly, um, you can hold a slope of much steeper than one to one. But um, it's it's really um, kind of a mixed bag out there. So you you uh, you talked about the guide rail. And you recommend it. We, we we recommend it too. You said the wife went over the slope when you were there. Yeah. No. 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 We no. had a he had a photo long ago when we issued this enforcement order. I mean, not to prolong this, but when he originally brought me out there to ask what he could do to the slope, I said, put up a guardrail. Like, don't touch the slope. Just put up a guardrail, and you won't have cars in the well. And and I went away for a while. He brought me back because people had done work, and he wasn't happy with it. And I said. You don't have any permits for this work, and that's how this got in front of you. So, right. the guardrail has always been the best solution. Okay. Was, you spoke to the applicant. He was, he was reluctant to put the guardrail up. No, he wasn't reluctant to put the guardrail up. He, he he was more feeling as though he had inherited something that that wasn't a problem that he should have to deal with. Um, and I was impressing upon him the fact that if he was going to live there and. and you know, have his family there, he really needed to address this. Okay, thank you. Yep. No questions. Doug? No questions. Motion? I would say close an issue tonight. Say it again? Well, I mean, do you feel you need a waiver? Because you would need to grant that before you close. Well, see, you know, this is one of those. I mean, the applicant can request it and I'll write it up if that's what you would like him to do. We're relying upon an order that we're going to discharge. And then there's going to be a new order for the new work. We're not relying upon the old order. The old order has been done and complete. The problem was when this applicant bought the house, that order had never been recorded. Yeah. So it never came up. So it sits out there in our records as being open. Yeah. It deserves to be closed. Yeah. No work was done under that order other than what was permitted. All right, okay. One. And the old order? If it's pre bylaw, it's 458. 20, 25, 30 years ago. 442458. Not that long ago. No, you guys remember so, it. Okay, as long as I've been sitting here. Yeah. Um, uh, WPI <laughs> permitted it and he remembered it. There was a planting plan, wetland restoration, all that's out there and more. I mean, the wetland's fine. Um, the crossing is fine. Again, not super. No, well it's, it's, it's a pre <laughs> existing, as you point out, it's pre existing. Right, yeah, yeah, it's fine. All right, all set. Motion holds. Yep, so moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. Thank you. Next one would you is like, that. Um, Mr. Bigelow, would you like a copy of that order when I issue it? I'm sorry. Would you like a copy of that order when I issue it? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. I will send it to you. Do you have mine? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, thank you. Next one is uh, 242 1719 Mass F DOT. I request to continue to November 15th. So moved. Move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next one is uh, 242 1718 60 Road. Good evening. Craig Hockman from the Legion's Garages representing the applicants for 60 Deer Meadow. This is the septic repair at the bottom of the hill. Um, we have Board of Health approval. I checked in with them today. Um, Peter Breen drew the short straw. He'll be putting the system in. Um, My drone, right? Yeah, well, he said he's going to rent a new machine just because he doesn't trust the brakes in one of his machines. So uh, we did talk a little bit, too, about stabilizing the site as he backs out when the, when the work is done. 
and we think we're going to have to break up that, s that slope into a bunch of small subcatchments just to slow down the velocity of the water to get some seed to take. Um, the reality is the seed won't take until next spring, so we're going to have to put in some temporary stabilization measures this, this fall to get us through the winter. Um, we, can, we can do whatever makes sense. Um, cover the slope with straw, break it up into small subcatchments, mm -hmm. jute netting if need be. If you're terracing, you're almost going to put a tack of fire in to get you through the winter. Yeah, yeah. Because the straw will just wash away and blow away. Yeah, and the erosion controls will stay in and they'll be maintained in good working order during the life of the project. So uh, we're going to watch this one close. I imagine there'll be monitoring involved, so it will be, it should be protected, the wetlands, that is. So the final slope will be a terrace slope? No, it, it, it should be a uniform slope, similar to what's out there now, but it will be vegetated upon completion. Um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a challenge to get that to, to stabilize. Was there any thought to, you're clear, are you, has he decided which side he's going down? Yeah, he's, he's going down the lower side, which should be um, at the bottom of that plan. It's so, not as steep as the, the top. Right, so he'll have to clear vegetation. Would he put vegetation back? He, he's going to have to take down uh, two to three trees on that, that slope. Uh, the, the shrub layer within that wooded section is very thin. There's not much shrubs there at all. Um, there's just some large overstory trees. Uh, they'd be more than happy to put whatever they take down back. If they take down three trees, they'll, they'll put back three trees, um, if, if that's what the commission would like to see. We had a very generic note on our plan that just said uh, slope to be stable, uh, stabilized upon completion, because we weren't exactly sure how we were going to do it. You haven't done it yet. Right. That's right. Joe? Um, construction sequence or timing more than anything this season? I mean, it's yeah, they're, failed. they're hoping to start um, when the appeal period's over, if an order is issued. We, we staked out the erosion controls today and the bed. But then they didn't start this week. <coughs> so when they no, finish the construction, days. even though it's going to take all winter to sit there the way it is, and that a part of the spring to start to grow and stabilize through the next summer. You're gonna, who's gonna be, you're gonna be watching it through the entire stabilization period, you know, way after construction is completed? Uh, well, once, once it's stabilized, we'll request a certificate of compliance and I imagine have a site visit and if it looks good, back off. But until that point, we're gonna have to be monitoring it in accordance with your boilerplate condition. Yeah, that's my concern is that on that slope, you know, even even with the tack of fire and great stabilization methods in place through the winter, that that, that spring melt off is going to be critical. Yeah. Are they having backup issues that they need to do this? No, no. This this all started. They wanted to put an addition on the side of the house, and they had a Title Five inspection, and the existing system failed because it was in the water table. Um, the system has no sign of breakout. So why not just wait? Uh, they want to get it behind them and and move forward with the, their main goal, which is to put on a small addition on the side of the house. Which is outside of the buffer zone. It is, yeah, yeah. 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 You done, Joe? Still concerned, but I'm done. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not concerned, but I see no reason to make them wait. I'm, I'm in favor of letting them get started on it as soon as possible. Uh, Greg, I, now that you've awarded the contract to the contractor, mm -hmm. I, would, I would like to get some type of, uh, or, or Jen, just to uh, get a construction sequence and know how they're going to do this, how they're going to get the stone and the sand down there, because uh, they're definitely not going to drive a truck down there. No, no. In fact, uh, Peter's planning on a lot of handwork. On a septic system? <laughs> the, the trench, for instance, from the tank down, we have three D boxes. A lot of that slope's going to be dug by hand to minimize the uh, disturbance on the slope. But you still got to get down, you got to get material down to the bed. Yep. So. A lot of wheelbarrows. <laughs> but we, old school, man. We'd, we'd be happy to, 
you know, now that there is a contractor, uh, we'd be we'd be happy to modify our construction sequence. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to see it see a construction sequence and how we're going to do this. They're going to get some youthful labor. Not prior to close. Prior to closing, I think it's a you know, pre-construction condition. Right. Okay. But it would be it would be nice for us to see it beforehand. Well, you don't meet again until the fifteenth, so you want me to just circulate it? Right. Yes. Okay. The other contractor was looking into helicopters. And really? Yes. That's why I said drones. Lowering materials. Trimming it in. I'd rather hire 25 laborers with wheelbarrows <laughs> than hire a helicopter. <laughs> Come on. They've been, uh, they've been into this now for over a year and a half. Yeah. And I think we're the third engineering firm to come up with something. This will be, this will be one to hang your hat on. I wanted to leave as soon as I saw the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> you can handle this, Greg. This is yeah, not, yeah. this is nothing. Thank yep. You. No questions. Doug. No questions. All right. So we need a motion to continue. You said no. Close the we'll close, close. I'll move that we close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. You too. Next one is, uh, you said there's a, the, they have a DEP number, 33 Regency Place. For the record, Andy Street, Civil Design Consultants. Um, I do have a revised plan here. We worked with um, Chen on making some tweaks prior to this meeting, but after the submission, so I have two copies here, and I also have the, uh, the Oh, and the other two copies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, I just want to give them the background on sure. why this is, um, for them as it is. As you know, we have an open order of conditions on Regency Place for the construction of the homes out there. But because the majority of the homes were not within the buffer zone, I think we had like two driveways and a retaining well that fell within the buffer zone outside of the larger subdivision, roadway, drainage, etc. Um, you added a condition to the order of conditions that said any work on the houses that required work in the buffer zone would need to come back before you as a new NOI. So here you are. So this um, this is part of the Newcastle Estates. Uh, it's uh, the house and the site is well underway. I believe they're framing up now so that the construction of the house itself is ongoing and the, uh, the, the Chris Maroon, the um, our client is the intends to finalize a purchase on this and would like to install a pool to the uh, rear of the um, of the house. Uh, the pool with the surrounding patio, some walkways coming from the house, and then a uh, 12 by 14 pool house, um, most of which or a fair amount of which will be located within the 100 foot buffer zone. I believe the closest will be is about 71 feet from any uh, any wetland. There's uh, there's a pocket in the northern piece of the of the parcel and then also to the northwest on the, on the adjacent land there. So those buffer zones extend onto the land. We don't, we don't plan on touching the 50 foot no build or the 25 foot no disturb, um, but there's about 30, 3,200 square feet of disturbance within that 100 foot buffer zone there. So um, we, we propose in erosion controls. I mean, I think the other piece of the order that's out there now is that there are erosion controls for the site that are inspected by Norse Environmental regularly and uh, associated with this project would be its own set of erosion controls and call out silt socks on there, but we're happy to do whatever the commission feels uh, is appropriate. Um, and we've also specified on the revised plan, which it just kind of peeking at what you're looking at, it looks like you have, there's a, there's a stockpile area, a stockpile area um, that is outside of the, the buffer zone that will be used for materials as the um, excavation happens and, and, and construction and things of that nature. So, um, so yeah, happy to field any questions you may have. Do I have a mistaken recollection that 
there was an issue with some of these backyards when the original subdivision came through. Was there an open space access towards the end of the cul-de-sac? Yeah, but we're way before this is, that. This is the beginning of that project, right? Right. So this is the part of the project with the major wetland behind it. There's a giant wetland on Blue Ridge Road, mm -hmm. and this is that uh, that side of the project. So there's no, well, there is open space, but it's all wetland. So I think the open space land that's upland is down the end of the cul-de-sac on the other side of the street. Okay, okay. Then I have no questions. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Yep. No questions. Doug? Isn't there supposed to be a, a fence around the pool? A fence around the pool? Just per, per code? That yeah. could be. Something like that. Certainly for coordinate protection, that with the building. To keep people department. out. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we, we make sure it complies with any. any I mean, there's no fence code. shown that I can see. So. And they have young children, too, so I'm sure it's something. Yeah, we, it's not shown on the plane. They're correct, but that is something that. So a lot of times what happens here is you need to come, you might want to condition a fence to be proposed because a lot of times they want it to come off the house and all the way around the pool and the yard versus sure. just around the pool. Sure. So if it's going to be farther from the, you might, you might just want to I see what have you're saying. a so condition If it's further into the buffer zones. Then, right. Then to be, you know, planned to be supplied prior to installation okay. or something like that. Yeah. I yeah, did, did forget to mention that they will be, they're proposing that cartridge style non backwashing filter and things like that for the, for the pool maintenance and, and that. So. Jenny, you ready to close it? Yep. We have a number? Yep, we did. We got one. 1720. I move and we close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Yeah, this is. Thank you very much. Is that it? She didn't have a chance to now, put it on. Now we have more than 21 days between the next meeting. That's why we're closing and doing. <coughs> so I've drafted all of these in anticipation of trying to get them off the agenda, so we don't have to see them again right. next time. Okay. Much appreciated. Well said. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Next one is uh, Force Murder, NACC 17981 Johnson Street. So if you recall on this one, um, this was over a year ago that the applicant came before you to um, replace their deck in kind. They had just bought the house and the deck was rotting. And Heidi had gone out there and the, um, there, I actually have a great before and after shot of what happened to the backyard. But basically, they, um, <coughs> there was a retaining wall installed. Okay, just skip the photo. But there, there's a retaining wall that was installed around the yard um, at the wetland line. So literally it's wall, wetland line. And if you recall um, from the photos before, which I do have, that retaining wall is failing and leans precariously towards the wetland. Um, so you issued an enforcement order and given that the applicants had just purchased the home, gave them a year to come back before you with a solution that um, provided for the establishment of a buffer zone to the to the resource area as well as you know repairing the potential hazard to the wetland so they're here now to ad address that violation um, just to uh, reiterate a little bit of what Jennifer said um, my wife, uh, Krista, and I, we, we bought the property in June 2015. Um, actually, part of the reason that we, uh, we bought the property was we, really, we, we, loved the, we loved the layout of the back, backyard. We loved the layout of the land. Uh, we thought that the uh, retaining walls it was um, kind of gave the, the, the backyard some definition that we really liked. We obviously weren't aware at the time that it was any sort of violation. Um, when we purchased the home, uh, the deck uh, was in need of repair, which we understood when we purchased the home. Uh, we instructed our contractor to to get the proper permit in to, to, to repair the deck. And at that time, the, uh, the Conservation Commission, um, Heidi at the time notified us of the, 
uh, that the wall uh, hadn't been constructed uh, in accordance with any permit and was likely in violation of the Wetlands Protection Act um, or the regulations, I apologize. Um, so we had come, as Jennifer noted, we had come before uh, the commission in April 2016. Um, the, enforcement, uh, uh, the enforcement letter was issued. Um, we engaged uh, Merrimack Engineering and, and instructed them uh, uh, to, to, to draw up the proposal, which I think you probably have before you. I have copies if, uh, if, if, if you need it. And um, we, um, you know, we have, we, we, uh, as we said in April 2016, and, and we're, as we say today, we're interested in working with the commission to, to find a solution to the, to the issue, understand the issue. Uh, we're interested in finding a solution that's, uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a compromise. We think what we've proposed um, is a compromise in that it, um, it will it will protect the wetland uh, below the wall by 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 replacing the wall with something that's uh, reinforced uh, um, interlocking an interlocking stone wall is not in danger of failure um, as Jennifer noted the the wall as it stands now is um, you know in danger of failure at some time in the future you know if not imminently sometime in the near future um, and so those are the that's the proposal um, we presented today. Uh, I do apologize. Uh, the folks from Merrimack uh, were going to accompany me. They uh, were a little under the weather, so I'll do my best to answer any technical questions that uh, we may have to supplement. But uh, you know, I'm obviously happy to answer any questions that I can and, 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 and take Thank you. feedback from the commission. Thank sure. you for the opportunity. Circle back to me, okay. please. Al, I, uh, I don't have any questions. Um, seeing that you, I know, I know we talked to this about this before. We talked about sloping down to the wetlands, and then and then uh, putting more plants to take it out, get get you back to the 25. That would take a lot of your yard. Mm -hmm. um, I know you proposed the wall, uh, but the wall is at, is at the wetlands, so. Um, Seeing you're going to go to the expense of um, uh, putting a new wall up, we would like to to uh, get some of our wetlands back. Um, I know that'll, that'll be the uh, contention of the commission, I believe. Um, how, this, the wall is small, right? It's only like a three-foot wall high. Uh, it's. I mean, I haven't. I don't wander around back there. I'd say it's probably between yeah. four and six feet in some places. Oh, six feet in some places. It's, it's, it's a little taller in some places. Um, um, yeah. I'm estimating. So. Yeah. I wouldn't say any points at six feet because I've yeah. walked it all and I'm taller than the wall at all points. I okay. guess I would yeah. say maybe four, five feet. Four three to five, five feet, maybe. maybe. Thank you. Um, like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm only speak for one person. I, um, but I, I think if you're, if you're going to go through the expense of removing that wall, if it was me, I would slope it down and put some wetland plants in there and get, you know, get it, get it, give it us some back. Um, I mean, I, I don't expect you to go to the 25 because you're on this, on this corner here, you're really close to the house. Um, <clears throat> but that'll be the commission's, uh, what they feel. But I, Personally, I would get rid of the wall. You save yourself a ton of money, and a bobcat or a bulldozer can come in and just slope it down, and then you, you can just put some wetland plants in there, and you're done. That's that's what I would do, because uh, the wall is going to be expensive. But you're stopping short because we would. So typically, we're all saying this is typical. Typically, we would also want to regain the 25 foot no disturb and monument. It. Well, this, right. this lot didn't, this house was built before the 25, so again, we've always discussed that it wouldn't need to be 25, that, you know, you've definitely allowed somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 on some lots, 15 on others. I mean, it could be a variable with buffer, but but certainly, you know, the, the problem with walls is, too, is it cuts off habitat, right? Like, everything walks up to the wall, and it's the end of the road. So, you know, there's no... I'm not opposed to the wall per se, but it would it should definitely come back to allow for some sort of buffer planting behind. Or I mean, sloping would be ideal, but again, but the choice is yours. monetary standpoint, <coughs> they'd be better off sloping and put wetland plants in there versus putting 
Well, it wouldn't be you know, that wall would be not approvable the way it stands now, anyways. So you so you'd end up pulling it back anyways. At least if you slope it, you put some wetland plants. If you slope, if you slope it, if it's the highest part of the wall is four feet, if you slope it, you're going to have to come back from the face of the wall back eight feet. If you want to have the bottom of the right. slope at the face of the wall, and that's you almost it. allow it to extend toward the wetland, then you don't have to come back as far as eight feet. And it's almost to the 25. Right, so, well, if you... Where's if you, the 25 this, line anyway? Oh, the 25 is pretty close to that. Um, it comes back. Close to the deck, not close to the house. It, okay. But the, um, the majority of the clearing and filling appears to have happened as you look at the plan to the back left when you look at those aerials. It appears the well was always pretty close at that right-hand corner. Um, I mean, if if the slope only needed to be eight feet, you would plant the slope and then continue to maintain the existing yard. That's how we did. Remember Katuit with the pool? Same sort of situation. Right. Now, we, we understand that you're, not, you're the home, a new homeowner that you you bought a one that are buying a bad bad bag of goods. So we're not going to. Try not to hold you responsible, for sure. But we have to enforce our bylaws, for sure. So we try to work in a gray area so everybody is happy. Um, I'm not miserable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I understand that the corner is really close to your house, so you know we you know we can uh, kind of. That's why I was saying variable with buffer, like right. plus or minus. We've done that in other places, plus right. or minus. Which is the high point of the wall with next to the house, actually. Well, that I mean, that's where they've probably gained the most land, even though if you look at the aerial, the most clearing seems to be have done back down to the left. But there's no distances called out on this plan. Oh. No well, that's because right now the wall, if you look at the plan, is I mean the 25 and the 15, I mean the 25 and the 50 are on there. Yeah, no, the, I, see, I see that. But, but the wellin is right at the wall. Like literally, if you look at the photos, you look down off the wall, and there's the stream that flows by. Yeah, there. but I'm, I'm looking at the house. I'm looking at the corner. I'm looking at the steps. I'm not seeing any columns. So. So the deck is in the 50, but it was. Again, when we permitted it under a small project, it was lawfully constructed. They didn't expand it. They just basically replaced the thing in kind. And I don't have a problem with the deck. Right, right. I'm, so not, I'm, not I'm just wondering why, what distances you want to know about. Well, it, we're, we're, we're suggesting, I'm hearing that we're suggesting that he abandon the idea of repairing or replacing the wall and just grade it, cut back and grade, which I would do if it was my yard. But I'd just like to see... I guess I just like to see distances called out. It's not mandatory. I can, I can, I can figure it out from the from the scale. Oh, I'm, actually, I'm actually kind of torn, torn on this one, on on the wall versus the grading because, in some instances, when we're trying to preserve the 25 foot no disturb, we ask for physical barrier. And in this instance, you're up kind of tucked on a hillside, and the wet one's perched up behind that. No, no, the wall ones, so they're going to, you know. Oh, it drops away. It's down, it's down, it's down. I guess I didn't know how far out Charles the street this was. The, uh, but I guess the point is if nobody saw the original work to be done, nobody's going to see a future violation in the future. The wall acts as a physical barrier. Well, no, it acts as a place where no, if they dump, dump stuff dump behind off. it, then we can't see it. anything. Yeah. It's a dump off. It's a jump off. It's actually not even safe, really. Uh, it's going to take quite a, quite a bit of, they got to rip out the old wall. And they're going to put a storm into it. I mean, and they're in the wetlands. Yeah, but you know something, though? They do it once, and they, they'll never have to revisit this thing and maintain well, a repair. if they slope it and put wetland plants in it, then they won't have to they won't, touch it either. I'd get that wall out of there in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Never have to revisit it again. Never think about it again. Absolutely. So yeah. we get something back, some buffer, uh, some no disturb. Yeah. Are we talking about some barrier or just monumentation? I would say just monumentation at whatever the no disturb becomes. Okay. It would be the top of the slope, right? So if it's sloped down pretty quickly. I mean, I think Doug was talking two to one, right? Two to one slope. Two to yeah. one slope. So a pretty six steep feet. slope. At the worst. At the worst. Six part. to eight feet. And then you'd monument the top of that slope and just plant, put plantings down below and call it a day. And, and you know, if, we, if, if they get rid of the wall and, and it's graded back, you're going to get a much better variety of plantings, yeah. a, better, a, right. better, a better plan. And the critters will be happy. Yeah. Well. 
Chris, and no one falls off the backside. Are you, uh, are you stuck on the idea of that wall? I mean, are you really, really in love with that thing? Or? We'd love to put it back, but uh, I do understand. We, we, you know, we do understand. But I mean, it's it's coming from. the idea of getting rid of it and grading the ad, you're actually going to be gaining, you know, a, a, a better, a more aesthetic area. I mean, the wall is kind of like, so I don't know if you like it or not. I mean, if that's what you want to do, you can propose well, it. I'm not mean, telling you what to the do. The applicants had the purpose of just creating a very flat area in yeah, the backyard. The wall so. is going to create a flat backyard yeah. right up to the wall. Usable yard up to the wall. So, but I, but they'd only be they'd only be cutting back eight feet. Right. So I think what the commission's saying is they're going to make you pull that wall away. Sure. So you could just pull the wall away, mm -hmm. or you could just make a slope out of what the wall. Save yourself the cost of building the wall. And have your and the same use a lot yard area. Right. But what it's going to do is take 10 foot of the yard away from But we're going to do that to them anyway if you make them pull the wall yeah, back. Yeah, you're going to pull the wall away from all of And that's the, that's the trouble. See, that's the trouble with mandating a wall. The, the location is then going to be d determined. Well, request is leave the wall in the same location. Ain't yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. That's not going to happen. And basically, basically what happened. Now, if, that, if you're not going to allow that, you can try and put the wall back further. So it would be better off sloping it. I'm I'm just thinking, what's the best way for them to get out of it? They didn't, you know, they didn't do it, and uh, I'd like I to try that. to help them get out of it. <laughs> I mean, summarizing it, we're contemplating giving them the same in the end, the same usable yard area, regardless of a wall or no wall. Right. Yet, what we're proposing is why replace the wall and, and go through all that expense? So really, it's a cheaper alternative to the same usable area in the end. Right. I guess that's kind of the idea. We're trying not to hurt you here. I, I, we appreciate that, and I understand. Um, I understand. Um, and, I, and I think it would be pretty consistent that some things we've done in the past under, under extraordinary circumstances to, to, to regain as much no disturbance as we, as we can. Right. So this is um, currently all being done under an enforcement order, correct? So I also think construction of a wall, if you permitted it, may need to be a filing, whereas removal of the wall and restoration of the area is much easier to do under the enforcement order. Yes. I mean, I'm not, I'm not interested in making them file an NOI. Well, I'm saying if you construct a wall, right, so this, this is, there was no notice of intent for the old wall, I would say if you, we are, if you are anticipating allowing a wall, then you would, they would need to file, because that's a new structure. And a waiver. We're trying to talk him out of it. Right, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. And I'm trying to talk him out of it, too, by telling him he wouldn't need to file if For he just huh? <laughs> graded down and I think you might get, I think the net result at the end, you, you're going to get what you wanted without the, without the thing being there. And it's kind of like you're, you're getting rid of a liability. I understand. That's, yeah. that's just the idea. I don't know. You want to think about it? You can certainly think about it. You don't have to make the decision tonight. Yeah, I mean, we, would we be able to, to think about it if yeah, we well, possibly submit a revised proposal? We can continue for three weeks. Too, and you, we can get you out of engineered plans, right? Because yeah. if you're not going to construct a wall, all you have to do is sort of have a plan. Line. line up a contractor, have him put into a narrative what he's going to do. We already have a plan that I'll, shows where everything is. Sure. I, I mean, even a... You're talking about you're talking you about landscape show, design. You should show the slope on the plan, and the the, the base, base of the slope as well as the top of the slope. It doesn't look like it's if too much from what you don't have to go back that far from the wall because the height of the wall is you know three feet or something like that, which means you go back six feet from the present top of the wall. So you design regrade the backyard with the. With that in mind, with the take the grades that are at the base of the wall. Just show a two to one probably slope. Gonna end up go back a two to one slope. What's that? You're probably going to end up with more backyard sloping it. Well, building the wall because you're not going to get the wall where it is now. Yeah, but, but you got to so remember. We're going to have to decide where, where you can put the wall. Mm -hmm. So you can conceivably be 10 feet up from where the old wall is. Mm -hmm. So you lose that 10 feet. So you. You're not really going to get, you're, you're probably going to gain more by sloping. Okay. Well, if you come back up the slope, you got to remember that from the top of the slope, down the slope, there's going to be an area you're not going to use. You're not going to cut grass, you know, you know it's not going to be grass. Mm -hmm. You're not going to cut cut the grass or use it as part of your backyard. Because you're going to be putting wetland plants, not grass. You know, you put uh, plants of some kind on it, and it would be the, you know, a barrier in a sense. 
but, but this would be it's not a usable part of the you could submit a landscape design plan instead of a construction plan sure. well not, a, not even i don't even think not even, I just think not even that. Just revise this plan high bush blueberry winter berry you're just going to put some nice shrubs on the back slope talk, and talk, let to, it grow. talk to you know. okay yeah. um we're trying to keep this as low budget as we can i i probably appreciate that and we understand so so we can't we, so what do you want to do you want to well, I would just give three weeks. We get can talk weeks. it through. Get through. We can yeah. come up with a, a new and then plan. If you decide you want to go with the wall, then we, that, that's something we're going to have to address. Understood. But I'm, I'm, letting you, I'm letting you know ahead of time, the wall is not going to go where it is now. Understood. Thank you. you. And you don't need an engineer to do what we're suggesting? No, no. You do it in-house. All right. We need a motion to continue. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Right. All right. Opposed? The engineer. Thank, Thank you. you. Next one is in the order. Maybe one Johnson. 461. File, file photo. 
right there. And the rest is just a small expansion all the way around. You can see, in addition, we elected to go over the old concrete. We thought that would be less disturbance to the area, so we're gonna have some pavers put down over the old concrete with an expansion around. When we began the project, we saw it as just a repair, and we realized our error in that, that we should have first come to the commission to work through this and create a proper plan. So we want to apologize that we didn't follow the proper procedures in doing this. Um, so now we want, we're just hoping to get some guidance and how we can move forward. As Jen mentioned, the work has begun. What we've done so far is, is the site has been um, kind of smoothed around where the existing patio is where we were hoping to expand it. That's the only uh, way that the area has been touched. In doing this project, we didn't feel that we were in any way having an adverse effect on the wetlands. We love our home, we value the wetlands, it's why you know, Summer Street is a really busy road and one of the reasons we love it there and we've stayed for nine years and we have no intentions of going anywhere is because we have this oasis in our backyard. It's, you know, you don't expect it from the street and you walk in and there it is. We really, really love where we live. All we want to do is bring up our pool area to modern standards so that we can really truly enjoy the area that we have back there. Thank you. Joe? Yeah, thank you for the uh, for the honesty. Yeah, and I can understand as a new homeowner, you wouldn't necessarily understand the significance of your know, conservation issues that we deal with. <clears throat> I'm, I'm reading your narrative and I heard your, your uh, presentation, and, I, and the only thing I'm, I'm finding a discrepancy on, and, and I'm sure it wasn't, the there. is the one towards the, the back. Yeah, so it's actually the, the, it's the ten. It's, we, we were looking it's not, not the thirteen. It's not the thirteen. Sorry about that. Yes, yeah. Yeah. it is ten. Yeah. Okay. Now, the fence that's there, that's the, the old fence. It is not the old fence. That's so old. years ago, I don't know how many years ago, well, it was, a couple years it ago, was, well, it was probably, yeah. a tree fell down in, during a bad storm, damaged the fence. The fence that was there was an old wooden fence. Um, it was rotting in many places. It was wobbly. It really wasn't safe. We've got three children. Yeah, we didn't move the fence. We, we, we no, the existing exactly. That was so my when, ultimate question. Yeah. So when so, that happened, yeah. we replaced it. So now there's a new white vinyl fence that's in the same spot that it always yeah. was. So same spot. So the limited disturbance overall hasn't changed. We're just talking about the, the patio area within that disturbed area. Right. right. I think. And that's the consistent. The shed has changed. So that you can see how the shed pivot the shed. The shed, the way it was, it was um, angled in and kind of cut the yard in half and so we pivoted it straight so it directly lines up with the house um, when, when we had to replace the shed which was also rotting and falling apart. There was a lot of repair that was needed. Yeah, the house. You, you do realize it's because it's so close to the wet area. We now, so water. now we know all these <laughs> yeah. things. We've learned a lot about wetlands protection and we didn't know about buffer zones and do not disturb the zones and, and now we do and you know we want to do the right thing but we really you know we love our pool. We want to make sure we can continue to enjoy it and, and you know, to the way that we'd like to with our, our large family. So, so I, I think trying to encapsulate my thoughts is that yeah. the, the apron area, the, the patio area around the pool, I don't have a, a real big issue with as long as we maybe can capture water and infiltrate it in, 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 a, in a responsible way. I, I don't see, and it, it, is the shed even on for discussion? Jen, I don't see how the shed being that close to the well and something that we, we could allow on this call. Well, I think yeah, there's two, two things. They could they either move, move the shed back yeah. to the original location because that wasn't a violation per se, given how long it's been there, or they could, you know, as remediation for improving the patio in the no disturb zone, it's not the no build zone, that's the no disturb zone, um, move it out. I mean, there's, there's a host of sort of I mean, if the shed, if, the, if we were to, what it requires is an alternatives <clears throat> analysis. Yeah, if we could get the shed out of the 50 foot, I wouldn't. Well, not out of the 50, right? Because the the, the backyards in all, the the pool filters in there. It was grandfathered in when the pool was built. So it's all in the, the shed and all the yeah, underground plumbing. Everything's there. All the plumbing yeah, the is was, there. We didn't. We the, the filter that's there. We we built the shed, the new shed around where that existing filter was. We fitted it. That way, so we didn't we so didn't move, move it. The, around. Yeah, the shed's okay. been there all along. It's just slight, it's slightly different angle to the wetlands. 
do you need a full perimeter apron? I'm, I'm going to call it an apron, not a padded apron around the pool. I mean, is there a way to make the back a little skinnier? Yeah, so I think that if there, there's any room to give on this, you know, I mean, it is possible on the, the pool, the back there where we had proposed it out to 10, we could probably bring that in a couple of feet and it wouldn't, we'd still be able to achieve what, what we're hoping to do where we could set a chair up and while we sit and watch our kids play. But, you know, it, it's, the four feet is just so small that 10 feet, maybe that's a little more than we need. Seven would be, would be wonderful if we could put seven along that back area there. So we recognize that it's that stretch right there that does get close to that uh, 25 do not disturb zone and we want to comply with that if we can. Okay. No more questions for now. So just, just so I understand the picture, your, your existing conditions, when you bought the house nine years ago, or eight years ago, um, you had a pool, a pool came with the house, the shed came with the pool. Yeah, and the fence. And the fence. And you replaced the fence in kind, so the, the fence, the new fence is in the same location as the original fence. You didn't right. expand the area. And you, you're looking to expand the, the um, patio around the pool immediately. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the shed was, the shed was with the pool when you bought the house. Yes. And it houses the equipment. All right, I'm all set for now. I'm good. Okay. Yep. Um, I have two questions. The, well, I answer, I didn't know you took the uh, pool equipment was inside that shed, but I, I would like to see it turned back the way it was before, only because it pulls it away from the wetlands, if it can be. Um, I think I think uh, an eight foot apron around consistently around the pool might work. And the other thing is I see on the plan it says pave it, lay it over existing poured concrete. Not a good idea. No. 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 With the drain, like is the drain. Well, it's going to move. You got two different. Okay. You got two different uh, materials reacting to each other, so it's going to buckle. They're going to settle and heave at different rates. Right. And you're not going to be satisfied. You're not going to be happy. If you're going to go through this, your intentions were good. Yeah. You're yeah. Minimizing, you're minimizing disruption. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you, you know, I'm just trying to say that you're going to get throwing good money into into a bad situation. Yeah. No, I appreciate your guidance you know? on that. Um, I would definitely pull the patio out, the existing cat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Concrete, because you said it was rough anyways. It was people were tripping over. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So you don't have. It's not a good base. Yeah. I mean, we're everything, for a everything, that everything that starts with a good base. A house, a driveway, and a patio. The, the base is the most important part, and that's what people tend to ignore. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, moving the shed, is there any way to avoid moving the shed back? I mean, that was something we saved for for mm -hmm. quite a while, and to then now have to, now we're finally at the point where we can do the patio, and so if we have to go back and and move the shed back a couple of feet. Is there anything we can do? Yeah, instead of saying, what's the purpose of moving it back? I, I, again, alternatives. It's all about alternatives. So this this is the photo from before the shed was moved. Um, the one thing about that area before was there was a lot more shrubs behind and around in that area. So I think some remediation planting. Um, they have there's quite a large. That area is being used somewhat now. There's a play structure, and a, so I, I do think some planting back there would, you know, kind of prevent um, offset and yeah, some monumentation. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, this, don't get me wrong. The the whole thing has always been very close to this wetland. It's it's not. There's nothing sort of egregious about the current situation. It's just it's now that much closer, and there's that much more potential for. For incursion, so um, be I think I think one. monumentation <laughs> and planting would go a long way, and some kind of pervious nature to the to the patio, or you know, getting. I don't think the patio should be in the no disturb zone. I do think they should get on the on that side, get it out of the no disturb zone, and then you know, by going from concrete to something. But to achieve to achieve that, it's going to be something less than. The seven that they mentioned they'd be able to live with. It would, in some areas, it might be less than that. Well, I mean, it doesn't need to be. Well, it, it's a it, the buffer zone's not uniform, so I don't. I don't. Yeah, I mean, you but, can, it's but strange. The, it's got but the, weird the pool deck needs to be uniform, so if there's some slight. But are you talking about the area where they want to put pavers on top? 
Are you talking about? They want to put pavers on top of the current patio, which I yeah. So so what I'm saying, don't do that. But they also have it proposed at in the plan to be in the no disturb zone. I I do think if they're going to access the shed, they they might need. The other thing is instead of just paving right up to the shed, put some stepping stones, some large stones. Yeah, I mean, they need a plan. I guess what I wanted them to in front of you is what kind of filing do you want from them after the fact? Because patios generally aren't a notice of intent, but where this is in the no disturb zones, this gets a little. Well, how many things to think of this? How many? They're going to need a waiver. Right. It's, it's grantable under it. Yeah, they're going to need a waiver well, for the patio. Not, well, it's not a small project. No, no, without that, it's not a small project. Not, so, so, Can you but, grant a waiver? But it's under not new. But it's not new construction. It's an existing. It's well, an existing. Well, it'd be new construction for the extension of the patio, which I'm saying, generally speaking, would not be a notice of intent. But given the location of what they're proposing, I didn't want to tell them to file an RDA and have this come back as you telling them to file an NOI. I got no problem with an RDA. But we could. I mean, the simplest thing, and I don't think we can do it in this case, would be just an enforcement order explicitly spelling out what it is. Well, is no, they have to permit it, right? Because yeah. this is work in the budget. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, RDA. So if you, if yeah, you guys are fine RDA. with an RDA, I think I can guide them to filing an appropriate An, an RDA, RDA with an alternatives analysis. All right, so Jen, Jen is willing to, because if, if you didn't have your, your utilities in that shed, you'd be moving it. I'm sorry, say that again? If you, if you didn't have your pump, in yeah, there, you'll yeah. be moving it. Right, I understand that. Because uh, we have to be consistent with everybody. And uh, well, being where it is, it's not an ideal situation. I think that. Um, the patio, I would say eight feet around would be, would serve, serve your purpose and serve ours. So no. we're actually larger. around Around the back only, I mean, the, the front towards the house. Actually, three quarters of the way. So why, the think, gonna why, not the, out this, why not the back at six and then let them do whatever they want outside of? Well, six is now. Yeah, it's just on the back side where they're in the if no disturbed zone. If we could expand zone. elsewhere to, the, to what we've requested, then we'd be fine doing six along yeah. the back because we'll have enough yeah. space in okay. the other areas. Yes. Over, towards the, over towards the end, where the steps are right. right. yeah. over there is where we're that's, that's, that's reasonable to me. Yeah, that's, that's okay. the way to do it. That's the way to do it. All right, so you got it. So we're gonna. We'll let everybody. The commission is leading to an ninety-eight. Okay. So I don't know if that is. I'm sorry. Oh, it's called, it's a it's a here. Wetlands <laughs> Protection Act form called the Request for Determination of Applicability. Um, because it's after the fact, the commission does triple their fees, but that's not ridiculously exorbitant. It's just it's a lot cheaper than an NOI. An NOI. So. Um, there's a butter notification. There's a whole process, and you have to, you have some time to do it. Whether you get on their next meeting or the meeting after that would be it depends on how much work you want to put into it and how quickly. But I can help you with that, and yeah. we can talk tomorrow or Friday yeah, whenever you're available. Okay. okay. Yeah, just work with Jen so when you come before us again, okay. everything's in place. You can hopefully move forward, okay. right? And, and, and how long does that process typically take? The uh, our landscaper, we we want to tell him. To, to so if they, if you were able to get a filing in for the 15th and get a negative determination from the commission, you can start work within like 10 days. I think is the appeal period on an RDA. Well, thanks for Thanksgiving done. It's going to put right. you. Right. It's going to put you right into November, though. So you may, yeah. you may, you may not want to. You may not want to start. May, it, but this, I have no idea where you are now. This, this might be a spring. But tell, tell that guy that your contract that that's doing the patio blocks. Yeah. Do you want the concrete out? Yeah. yeah. So I, I didn't issue them an enforcement order. So this is a violation. So it's they're just going to file at this right. point. So they can. We don't need to vote on it. Would you also kindly, when they're putting the IDA together, would you assist them? In a uh, an alternatives analysis. Yeah, well, I think the alternatives analysis largely stems around their existing. Lot. That's what but, yeah, we just discussed. Well, some wording. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I, I kind of but, but, but documented. I I'd like to see it in the file. Um, I have a lot of appointments. Yeah, just give me a ring ahead of time. You can let me know when a good time is. Yeah, because Friday's a half a day. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you guys. Okay, next one is. Where are we? Johnson. Yeah, 458 Johnson. 458 Johnson Street. Just um, I request a continuance to 1129 for them. Continue. Motion. Okay. So, so, so Deb made a motion. Say it again. Which, yeah, what do you want? Second motion. Continuance. Second. Second.
Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh. Opposed? <coughs> That's unanimous. Let me refill my water. Here. Gotcha. Go ahead. So 440 Great Pond Road. Oops. We don't need to go to trail. Um, was the enforcement order we discussed last time? They've requested a continuance. Um, I would recommend they may have something for the 1115th meeting, but I won't be here, so I'm requesting that continue them. They said a month, so I also I can tell you now I won't be here on the 15th. Right, so okay. we're going to 1129. Okay. Okay. All right. okay. All right. Motion. So Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, and that's unanimous. Next one is the uh, ANRAD extension for 100. ORAD extension. Was it? ORAD. Uh, uh, can we go back? Can we go yeah. back? Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. I'm sorry. Chairman. Can we go back to that enforcement order? Oh, the slash. Yeah, they want to remove the slash. I just I just caught that in the letter here now. So they, they, he wants to go delineate and try to figure out what to plant in that area, and right now it's just completely covered in slash. There's some benefits to leaving slash, but in this particular area, if they're going to replant, there's that's not. But if they do remove it, it should just all be by hand. Because they're going to give they're going to give a whole 100 foot restoration plan. Right. If we want them to restore the, the 100 line. foot, then and we're not going to leave Buckthorn slash there. Would be my thought. It's leaving slash is no better and no worse than leaving a standing snag. It's, right, it's housing. Is, it's housing for wildlife. This is buckthorn. This is invasive. And it's dead. It's dead buckthorn. No, it's, it's slash, right? right? Um, <laughs> they cut it. Right, but if we're going to have them replant the whole area, I mean, we can leave it. I, I, I don't really care one way or the other. At some point, if we want them to replant, they're going to have to remove it. If we were l making them leave this as a natural area, then yeah, I would say so fine. So why not? Let them leave it until they start. Again, I don't care one way or the other. They, that was their request. I, I'd say no. Okay. Remove well, nothing. They can, they can clear that out when they do the restoration. Well, if, if, if we allow it. I mean, let's let's hear what has to be said. I mean, it, How much is it? How many feet? Well, it's, it's a lot of the buffer zone. So. I mean, I showed you the photos of the last one. Um, this is 440 Great Pond, right? Um, well, it's mission accomplished, all right? Yeah. But the thing of it is that it does get it's quality, it. quality stuff instead yeah. of uh, invasives. I think that would be a better fit. The, let me just put it this way: from the watershed special permit perspective, the the planning board is never going to allow this not to be replanted. I could guarantee you that. So, what number four forty? They, yeah, they weren't happy when we allowed um, the other side of Great Pond Road. Um, with Andy Crittenden to replant to just shrubs, re they weren't happy with that. So, mm -hmm. I'm, I can just tell you, this is not going to get. I, I don't think our job is to make people happy or not. <laughs> no, no, I I'm think our job is, is the, the wetland only, science. We're not the only board considering this. Is all I'm saying. And so, leaving it in this shape um, is is not going to be okay for. This there is. Correct me if I'm wrong, because. If I'm wrong, I want you to straighten me out right now. But in part of wetland science, don't we leave things behind to provide housing for certain critters? Right. So if this were the middle of the forest and someone cut down a bunch of trees and we had them plant a couple trees, even on the other side of the lake, he cut some stuff down on that island and we told him to leave it alone. It was just stumps and logs and things. That's habitat. This will prevent things from, from regrowing. I mean, they, nothing's going to be able to... This is someone, you know, the edge of the lake. I know That's what it, I know what it is, and uh, I know only too well what it is. And this is, I mean, this needs to be replanted. Yeah, that needs to be replanted, but there's nothing there. That's the stuff that was there is all in the pile. Behind it. Yeah. I don't know. I, if they're going to replant this, this is not the place to leave slash. Look, at, I mean. Not, you know, what it, you know what it is? It's just it's They're the, proposing to not leave it. They're well, they wanted to, to remove it yeah. so that they could get in there and consider what, what to plant. Again, I mean, we can tell them no. That, that's fine. This is, you know. I think for right now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to take it up. My opinion time. right now would be to, to do nothing. Okay. Mm. You can always change your mind in the springtime when you have to do planting. 
again, this is an enforcement order. We hold all the cards. You're telling them what to do. So. Just making a suggestion. If, if I'm if I'm off the bag, tell me. But I think that it's uh, for right I mean, now, I, it's being considered by a scientist. Let's consider it. Yeah. Yeah. The issue of I apologize when I stepped out of the room. You might have talked about it. The issue of owner versus owner's agent versus the representative of the owner's agent versus Everybody's the landscaper. Everybody's they're all involved. they're now they're all, all on board. Involved. Everybody's everybody's been notified. Everybody's been sent the enforcement order. Um, currently, the landscaper has hired the wetland scientist. They left him holding the bag. So, I so we'll tell him no for now, and when, when when he comes back in a month or whatever, we'll decide. Maybe we can decide then. If not, we'll wait till he start doing it when he shows us his restoration plan. Yep. You can, uh, you can pitch his tent then. All right, so we're continuing to the 29th. And we, we have, have a vote. motion in the we, second. And we voted. And we voted. Okay. We just didn't vote, talk about the slash, so, but I will let you know. So the next one is, uh, an ORAD extension for 100 way one. So, I don't know if you remember this one, but it was before you quite some time ago. Um, It's, um, this is next to um, Tom Zarico developed that common driveway yep. with the two lots. This is right next door going down the hill. Um, this was the delineation. Heidi had reviewed it back in the day. I went out there. There's a few flag changes I could have made, but I don't think, I think they're just differences in delineators reviewing delineations. So I am. Um, I recommend allowing the delineation to stand and extending it for an additional year. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next one is uh, 242-458 COC request for hay metal. That's the one we, I don't see any reason not to close <coughs> out the prior so order. Per I was discussion. deliberately waiting for this discussion as opposed to the enforcement action. Did I hear you, you say that part of the problem, I guess, was the, they never filed the original order. Right. And now he wants to file, he wants, theoretically, for us to grant a certificate of compliance and then file both? No, I, I want to close this one out. This was for construction of the house and the driveway and the crossing all back in the day. But on that original order, that was never filed. It was, it was never Record. um, recorded Record. minute, yeah. or closed out. And so now I just want that recorded and closed out so it's off the books and his new filing stands alone as an after the fact modification mm -hmm. of that revetment. So my, my fear is this, and it's only because of a certain track record of this particular applicant's discussions. My fear is we could grant a certificate of compliance and he records neither of them. What would motivate him to record them now? after the fact. I'd say hold the certificate of compliance in abeyance until it comes back with proof of recording and then release it and record it the next day. I, I, don't, I don't think I he's agree. ever going to record it. Well, the problem is he can't record the certificate of compliance until the order is recorded. So to record them, he has to record both. I'm going to tell you he's going to get both and he's going to walk away and record nothing. Well, yeah. we still hold an enforcement order against him. I'm just saying I think you know, the best way is let him record it. Let's avoid the fight. What's what's the big big uh, Big deal, you know. If an order wasn't previously recorded, if you issue a certificate of compliance, right? It's well, in our it's cleared our records. I just feel that he's in our he's our within, records and his records, and a future buyer would perhaps would never know whatever. Right. Existed. Well, that's why I'm saying so, while he's still involved with us, let's get this done because if he doesn't do it, do. you know, we still have a project outstanding and an order of conditions. I I want him doing work while we still have our reach. If, if we leave this until he closes out the other order, then he doesn't need to record any of it. And it just becomes, well, he did the work. Who cares? But I'm saying why we're still involved with him. Let's make baby steps. Let's get him no. to close this out and record it. I, <laughs> What's our reach? As at long the end? as those are on two separate actions at the registry, I, I have no problem voting certificate compliance in a condition of that, and that it's going to be perhaps in the form of a motion. And hold it in abeyance until he gives us a proof of recording on the yeah, original order. He has to go twice. Let's let the poor guy go down. In fact, his engineers already or asked he, me the process. Or he might go zero times. So what's? It's going to be the same if we don't issue it. 
he has people involved now that are telling him what to do. I think if we wait, then we risk losing his contact with those people. And the people involved with his project know what needs to be done and can advise. If we wait so to the, the end of water his project. So says proof of recording must be provided, right? Correct. So he's not in compliance. How can we do it? We didn't the, issue the most, him that. The very first condition in the order didn't issue was him that order. It, and he didn't. We issued it to a developer, <laughs> and that developer is long gone. It's not enforceable. You didn't record it. That's against the, the rules. And, so therefore. And because it was recorded, you know, he went out and did his merry little thing. Yeah, and didn't know he was in a wetland. If it doesn't ever get recorded, but he's also going to be down there recording his new order. I, I'm. Do you think? I'm just sort of thinking we have people involved who are telling him what to do and the longer we wait the lo less likely it is that any of this is going to get done and in general we, are, we I, usually close i understand what it is we normally have a compliant we normally have a compliant the, applicant uh, I, and I, when I, we have a non-compliant applicant we have to get a little bit creative as how we operate um, you know. I also think if cost is a concern, and it appears to be that we just need to make things as expeditious as possible, so that. Well, I was reading between the line by his representative. I, I, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Either. Anything's going to happen. But we still have an enforcement order. Which is worth nothing if it's not on the record. Oh, it's on the record. The enforcement order is on the record. We've issued it. We've reissued it. I had a new one drafted in case this didn't well, go well. I say record. Record to the right, world. So in the course of conveying property, a new buyer would come in and not realize he's buying a nightmare. There is there is one there is one action that we can take if we don't get the compliance we want, and it's it's extreme, but we have the authority, and we just issue a cease and desist order on the entire parcel for any and all activities of any kind. We have the authority to do that, and the only bet way he can rebut that is to take us into court. And so, if you want to, if you want to lock it down and get compliance, you have to be prepared to go the extra step. Otherwise, okay. well, we're we going to get danced had, around. We okay, haven't so had non-compliance. I just, I'm just telling just you. Guess, you know? and I was just thinking that we wanted some piece of this off our agenda and done. With what we want so. is the work done. Right. And, and and what we don't want is somebody playing a game, saying, "Well, maybe I'll do it, and maybe I won't." Because all that does is, and that's exactly the feedback we're getting. Right. Is, is we're hearing that maybe he won't do it. That's maybe. why, while he's speaking to people, let's just get the things accomplished that we can get accomplished. Okay. Well, so let's keep. Uh, well, why don't we? Cease and why don't we, uh, right down the road, so uh, no problem at all. Continue this. I know you don't want to. I won't be here, and he well, won't be on. Meeting, the only right. thing he'd be on the agenda for is the COC, because the order's going to issue, and he's going to have three years I mean, to do the work. I mean, it's two four two four the. I don't think he's concerned about his COC request. He's not concerned because his order was never recorded. It's not on his deed. That's what I'm saying. Just get this done. Get it recorded. The more you're talking, the more you're supporting my position. Yeah, on really. Get it on record. Right. Get it at the registry of deeds. Because right. at some point, he, when he bails or goes bankrupt or he moves or gets transferred, so you're some gonna poor buyer You're going to vote it and, and make him go to the registry of deeds and come record the order Jen. and then come back and get the certificate of compliance from let, me and then go back to the registry of deeds and record that. Let me ask. If that's let, the way let, you want it, I don't know. I don't let, care. let me ask this question. I think question. that's a lot of work on well, this part. Well, is there anything well, I got, you from recording? That's, that's right. That's my question. So if, uh, if this... $75 fee, I'm not sure the well, town will we'll, let me pay we'll, that. We'll, we'll appropriate that out of the filing fees. We have well, that authority as well. You find the guy not doing it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Can't we just give him the opportunity so I'll tell you to what, do I'll, it before I'll, I'll tell you what. He's not going to do it. Hey, Joe. We'll, we'll, we can we can play this game. I will I will vote to issue, and I will tell you that you'll be doing the recording. Well, if we do, you have the decision here, this, right, Jen? Vote to issue COC. If he you doesn't do it, then, then, then we record both documents. We'll, we'll record the damn things. We'll do it. Why if not? he doesn't I don't think do, we should have to. No, I don't, I don't well, should he get any I'm not sure the registry would accept the phone. Of course they will. They'll yes, accept they will. They'll we can, say, we take it from, the, the, from anybody, as long as you yeah, get a check. Yeah, actually, because we're a party. As long as you, you get a check. At at all. All. I, first opinion. If you, if you give it, you were going to give a decision tonight, right? We are, yeah, we voted Why to close Why can't we hold it until he comes next meeting? He isn't coming next meeting. <laughs> we're issuing it tonight. It's drafted, no, ready one. to go. The other, the enforcement to do the law. He's not on the... There's no enforcement order. The no. enforcement order's already been issued telling him to they're do filing this. An, they're filing an NOI, right? He's right. filed an He's NOI. Filed a, we're we're about to it tonight. We have an NOI, yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah, coming sure. up tonight. You want a, you know, you, you want a COC request? <coughs> I, 
I personally will vote to give you the COC request, and then I'm, I'm telling you what my remedy is when we don't get compliance. Right. Okay. So we can do it Joe's way, too. If he wants me to, to have, have him record the order first and then come pick up the COC, I'm fine to do that. I, I guess I was just trying to make this as simple as possible so I didn't have to explain all well, that. He hasn't exactly made it simple for us either. Okay. All right, so we need a motion for the COC. Moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. What's that? You have one opposed. Joe's opposed. One opposed. You have one opposed, I think. Although we could do it Joe's way. Do you hold it well, in advance? Well, no way. Just pass the other way. <laughs> okay. I didn't really think they understood that. You were just saying hold the COC in abeyance until he records the old OOC. If you want to do it that way, you Joe's going to You want to amend the motion to hold in abeyance until it's recorded. I'm okay with what we just voted. Right. So amended. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's yes. unanimous. <laughs> yes, you picked up a vote. It didn't have to be unanimous. It could have gone three to one. I know. I'm fine to do it either way. I don't want anybody now to Now you have happy. options. I'll be personal. Next one. Al still thinks they're going to be recording it myself. I'm, I'm positive you will be. Okay. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to spend that money. 242-1690, yeah. COC request 150 for ship drive. So 150 flagship um, was the addition of parking areas to the to the proposal as well as um, repair of a cross driveway culvert. The head wall had separated from the pipe. Um, the work is complete. The site is stabilized. The erosion control has been removed. There are no snow stockpiling signs. Um, the um, owner or applicant is present and. The only issue was a, a portion of the, the no disturb the wetland markers were put on trees, which is appropriate, but some of them were um, put on like sort of metal garden stakes, which of course aren't permanent. And so um, again, I would vote to issue the order of conditions and just hold it until those are relocated to trees. Question, John? No. No questions. Yep. No questions. Doug? No questions. Motion? Move the issue of the COC as requested. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. So, said. Let's see one Two that I can see. Yeah, Kale didn't. Again, Kale went out too, and I didn't go out. I'm sorry, I was out of town. So, just. There were several entries, and for some reason, they took the one. I'm guessing. Whatever the nearest tree is, just stick it to it. Okay. Next one is uh, 242-1559, COC request for four. Um, this was for relocation of a shed and um, placement of plantings in the location of the old shed. So the um, shed has been relocated for some time now, but the plantings needed to be installed and needed to go through the monitoring period. We've since received the monitoring report. I went out and viewed, have photos of the plantings and the shed, which you probably don't need to see, but they, it's all been done. Joe? No questions. Yeah. No questions. Yeah. All set. All set. Motion. Move that we issue a COC as requested. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Oh, that's all we had to keep you so long. Not right. It was fun for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a number one rated show. That's right. <laughs> Cable access and entertainment. Got it. The, the next one. Thank you. We, thank, you. thank you. We'll just do, we'll skip over the calendar. And we'll just go through the national grid. Yeah. Has a tree clear. Yeah. So this was an, an interesting one because usually national grid, you know, does a lot of clearing along the roadside without much consultation, but they've um, contracted to do hazard tree removal, so an arborist who specifically identified you know, sort of the dead, dying, things with cavities, those sorts of trees. Um, this is after their right-of-way maintenance. And I did go out with the right-of-way maintenance and made some requests that certain trees not be um, fully removed, just top, that sort of thing. So there, there's two parts to this request. One would be, um, I drafted a memo, which I think you have copies of? Yeah. Yep. So the, the memo basically had states trees in wetlands. I've asked them to top them, not to cut them down. 
um, just to leave that habitat value. And two is some of the work is between the, the big parcel you own between, or that's in your control, between Granville Lane and Sterling. Um, it's also access to the state forest. There's trails out there. Um, they proposed that any anything they needed to cut in there, which is mostly white pine along the edge of the right of way, would be just cut and left in place as, as habitat as well. And it's on that sort of cleared easement that they do veg management on, but it's it's pretty shrub um, covered. And then um, you know they are they like when they do maintenance that is this for whatever reason the tree company doing this would like your approval um, if you want to grant that authority to sign whatever approvals they're looking for like if it's along the street right of way they're getting DP, um, DPW to sign and when it's on conservation land um, I could have a chair sign I could sign so basically supporting the memo that I wrote and be authorizing to me to sign on your behalf for any work on, on your care, custody, and control property. So I have a question for you. I've got a lot of questions for you, Jennifer. Uh, but I'm going to only ask one. Yep. Will you go out after the work is done to, to assure that the, the, they did not exceed the scope of work pre-approved by you in the first place? I can add that to my memo if you would like. I'd like that. My confidence is in you, not... This is groundbreaking. I, I, would, I am shocked. I hope it goes as smoothly as... Yeah. Proposing. <laughs> yeah, they don't really even propose to use much machinery off the roadway that they would yeah. they were, would propose to climb most of the trees and cut them. Yeah. Okay. Well, you and I have done a lot of uh, observing along the area, and, and we've seen yeah. we've seen a lot of uh, uh, difference in proposed versus completed. Right. I mean, I'm just used to working with the uh, utility company and their operators. I mean, they have a corporate vegetation management document when they go out to bid I mean, Lewis Tree or Lucas Tree or Aspen or whoever the whoever they hire, they're using the Bible. They, they, I've never seen like something like a memo yeah, or like, we'd like, any we'd like sort of memo. cooperation. I, this this is groundbreaking. Because yeah. because, so because they're just gonna go because they get paid in accordance with the vegetation management plan, not necessarily these other pieces of paper. Great. Hope it, hope it works. Listen, Joe, this is why the reason I have trust issues is there's no remedy if it doesn't go according to plan. Well, they there's, did there's, replant there's, for us in the Foxwoods. Um, oh, I know. So you, so you take down a you take down a 100 year old 300 foot tree, and you replant. Right. Come on. Oops. Got some nice hybrid blueberry. Mm -hmm. All set. <laughs> yeah. Come on. There's no remedy, and and that's the reason. That's the reason for it. There's no remedy. There's no this penalty. Be there's great. no nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will it add that to the memo, and so your vote would be to authorize me to sign whatever. And you have a complete confidence. <laughs> Is that a motion? I'm moving. Yes. I'm moving it right now. Second. I will in favor. Say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Did anybody, does anybody disagree with the schedule for next year? Yeah, that July 11th meeting is going to be done. <laughs> and also, there's a meeting on Valentine's Day. Oh, Deb, I'll take you out after. You got plans. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go out with John. <laughs> meeting date. Uh, Let's see here. Let's see if there's anything that interferes with any big holidays like. Well, I, I try to get you on the, um, you know, one meeting in December only plan. To be right. That's a, oh, always yeah. a good that plan. Works. Always a yeah. good plan. And then. The 28th, that's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. No, it's after. Thanksgiving's that early this year? Okay. Yep. Like Just like, so you're meeting this year is the 29th. Yep. And yep. that's why I accidentally oh, wow. scheduled to be away the 15th because I'm like, oh, it's the third Wednesday. We don't have a meeting. And then booked my flight and lo and behold you, know, you and Kale will get to have your first Thanksgiving's meeting Thanksgiving's the together. third week third it's the 20 it's like 23 24 right in there somewhere it's the 22nd I think this year so maybe next year it's the 23rd this year it's the 23rd okay so next year it's the 24th well however it works I don't know that that one it's, it's 365 and one fourth days that one fourth throws me off it's in front of you I don't even have the uh, it looks like a wonderful oh, we, gotta, we got three decisions. Are we, are we gonna have? No, yeah, we, yeah, right, we have decisions. Three decisions. I, I just have to uh, excuse myself okay. for a minute if you want to start them without me. I'll be right back. Does it make a difference which one is? 
about two four two seventeen. That's that's uh, him. That's his thing, man. Everybody did one condition. So we're going with 1712 first? Yeah, 1712. Amen. Okay. All right. So uh, 31 can be revised somewhat. Um, I just said the request for certificate of compliance is pending and shall be acted on prior to the issuance of certificate of compliance for this order I mean that would that would also if he doesn't do it put him in violation of this order if I if we leave that condition in 31 Joe I was just thinking about that possibility let me see what it actually says it's a standard condition right well we we add this when there is an open order so So we shouldn't say acted on, it should be um, re recorded, because it's been issued, so it mm -hmm. shall be recorded. Yes. Or prior to the start of construction. How about that? Right? God bless you. <laughs> yes. It's even better than you imagined. Hmm. I only bonded it at a thousand, most of all because I don't want the bond to be an, an obstruction to this getting done. So, so the guardrail, do we need to see any type of design or just require him to install a guardrail? That's condition 56. Well, you should indicate what kind, kind of guardrail is putting up, whether it's wood or metal do we care what? i don't care just keep the cars oh i i, I was, on the plan i was very eight, specific so. that it needs to be at the edge of the driveway parallel the flags a3 to a6 which is that whole length of the driveway where the wall is that's what the condition says Ugh. do you have a do you have like a and do we need an as built? Like, this is an as built work, so I can strike the as built condition. Do you have an example of guardrails? You know the way you give examples of stone walls? Do you remember the guardrail discussion? Yes. For, for, uh, yes, please. I do. <laughs> so, here this evening yeah. for the. It was going to cost $8 million. Bucks. $8 million to put the guardrail. That kind of guardrail would be perfect. That, like, wouldn't cut. But I don't care. If he wants to put a metal guardrail it's on his property, it doesn't matter to me in this instance. Yeah. But are we going to hold on? We don't have any. Oh, are we are we are we specifying a minimum size? Is the guardrail going to be two feet high, one foot high, three feet high? I think you got to give some direction, or you're going to end up with a with a, with a it, pile of pieces. It's a safety stone. measure. No, 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 no. Got a guardrail. We ask for a guardrail. So, so okay. So that that's that's an answer then. So there's such a thing as a typical guardrail. So that should be specified, to spelled out in the order. It says the applicant shall install a guardrail at the top of the revetment slash edge of the driveway parallel to wetland flags A3 to A6. Yes, pile of stone is not a guide. Okay, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I like, well, you know. Then, then he'll put it up and he'll do it twice. Okay, all right. Okay, so we'll delete the as built requirement and then the commission. Yeah, put a couple of snakes and string. <laughs> Some metal posts with chicken wire. Yeah. I see what I'm saying. That doesn't mean we have to prove it either. Just trying to, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Um, specify what has to go there, and then we don't have to go back and. Well, that's why I said, do you want me just to put in a condition that he submit a plan of the guardrail prior to should submit something that there you go. Okay. what Thank it you. is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Otherwise, Done. it's going to be. I got it. Anything. I mean, I, 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 you know what I'm saying. Picket I mean, fence. Yeah. I think, yeah, it could be anything. Could, a wood rail fence. It could be. It could be a ball. I'm of still string. interested how they got his wife's car out of the well. That's not hard. Okay. Let's get a record. Just record. Winch him right out. That's easy. That, that's. Can they get a be brand new when he gets the Every top? kid in Charlestown knows how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> this always gets fun after more than. So let's let's end all the fun. Come on. Okay. 
As amended. I got it. Right. Motion. You just need to vote. So move. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Next. Next one is uh, 242718. Yeah, man. So, this is that lovely septic system mm. down the slope. Um, so the only condition that I had in here was depending on the construction access location chosen by the site contractor, additional stabilization measures including jute matting and shrub plantings may be required. Additional stabilization measures will be included in final construction sequence submitted for approval. And then we do have our standard required. Oh, but you wanted to see it. So you want, you to want a construction it. sequence you want at, at the pre-construction pre pre No, no, we always get one. What I'm saying is you guys want to see it? Or? Yes. Okay. Two pieces. We at the commissioner. Yeah, we at the commissioner. Okay. Yeah. So that is okay. always, um, oh, it's condition 42. <coughs> so prior to any work commencing on site, the applicant shall submit to the NACC for approval and detailed blah, blah, blah. So because um, I'm still not convinced of getting the material. I'll put submitted and reviewed so, so that. Trimming it in with the helicopter is not un that unusual. I thought no. that was awesome. So it can be done. I believe it. It just. Well, not now you know no, what with the other court. There were, I mean, during, during Greg's presentation, not. what I was wrestling with, and I, I think he even heard him say it, is oh, this has been a year and a half process. This is really the result of them wanting to build an addition. I still don't understand the haste of why they're going to do it this time of year. So they want to they want to put the addition on. They want that, to get the addition done. That slow. Well, I, I don't know why, why they would want that. I think you want to do that all winter long. It's going to be a problem. Right, but if they're going to pay someone to do it all winter long, that's their problem. And and our order is clear enough that you know even though work is complete that they continue to monitor They're going to be monitoring it. It says reports. until stabilized. You're so. not going to be able to get, the, get in there in the springtime. So not even until late summer. I mean, I, I would rather see them do it now. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. the ground's going to freeze over. Um, Frozen ground condition would be really great. I, I just think, I don't know. If, well, if they, I, gotta, they have to, in order to get the Board of Health to sign off, they have to have it done before or freeze, I think. So once but you understand freezes, that with the, the, the stability of the, fl of the site, it's going to be unstable by our standards, but it'll freeze over. I get it. I'm going to be doing a lot of site visits to Deer Meadow. It's yeah, a will. long drive. Yeah, you will. It's a good place to run through. Okay. Just saying. Hell of a slope. Good slope. Yeah. Across the bridge from hell. Thank you. I, I, what do you need? Vote. As amended. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Aye. Next unanimous. Last one is. Yeah, it's in 14. I second. Yeah, I'll jump. 20. 730 Regency. Yeah, this is the pool at Regency. This is Regency. So I don't think you asked anything um, extra exciting of him. No, no waivers. There's no waiver request. No waivers. It's all outside the 50. Um, I put in here that. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to, I just said this site may be included in construction site monitoring already occurring for the order of conditions issued under DEP file number 242-1588, approval of the property owner required. So as long as Mr. Carroll is fine with this project becoming part of the monitoring, I don't think we need any additional monitoring is all I was saying. Doug, and then, Doug, Doug mentioned the fence. Oh, right, we need to add the fence. Thanks, Doug. Because that's a pain in the neck one that always happens. So. Oh, yeah. And you probably yeah. save the applicant like 200 bucks from coming back for a modification. Right. Okay. I'll add the fence. Okay. Motion? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. That motion.